Welcome everybody to the uh, first recorded uh, lecture. The reason we're not recording the actual first one is for reasons. Uh, it's hard to pull practical jokes on students if there is video footage of it for the next semester. So today we're going to continue our uh, adventure into evaluating uh, truth claims, right? So that's really the point of this class, right? The whole point of critical thinking is somebody gives you a claim about reality and you need to develop a set of techniques and mental processes. Thank you, I like, I like the, back, the background too. You have to develop a, a set of uh, techniques and processes by which you're like, um, this one's true, this one's false, this one is an opinion and isn't really true or false, you know, it's advice, you know. It's not everything is true and false, right? Like if I ask you a question, like how are you doing? That's not true or false, right? It's just a question. And if I say, you should go to the store, that's also not true and false. You know, so not every, you know, word that comes out of your mouth in English is necessarily something that carries truth. But um, the most easy way of, to think about the kinds of things that carry truth would be something like your professor is wearing a green shirt right now, right? <clears throat> that is a statement that is either true or false, right? And if I made that statement to you right now, that your professor is wearing a green shirt, how would you evaluate if that statement is true or false? What is it, I'm, I'm tossing you an underhand softball here. This is not a trick question. How would you how would you evaluate if I'm wearing a green shirt right now? By looking at my shirt. Yeah, exactly. It's not up to how you feel. It's not an opinion. You just make an observation and it looks green to me, you know? Um, in the past, I've messed with students and said, well, you know, maybe the white balance is off on my camera and it's actually a blue shirt or something. But yeah, you just look at you just look at the shirt and like, okay, there you go. I've evaluated it. It's probably true. All right. So let's look at how you guys did on the quiz. So 68% uh, on this one, which is better than the 56% which is really bad for a true false quiz. Like 56% on the previous one is like, yeah, you're guessing basically. Um, so you, we want, we want these numbers to get higher. These are rookie numbers. We've got to pump these numbers up. Okay. So here you can see the, uh, the claim, the expulsion of the Acadians, uh, the grand derangement from Canada led in part to the creation of Cajun culture in Louisiana. So this is a claim about history. And how did you guys go about evaluating if this claim was true or false? And today's quiz is going to have four questions, four claims about reality on it. And again, you're going to have to evaluate them if they are true and false. The fact that Saturn is bigger than Earth is a fact. It doesn't depend if you feel Earth is bigger. It's not subjective. Okay. So how about this one? Expulsion of the Acadians. How do you, how do you uh, evaluate that? How do you determine if that claim is true or false? Eighty-two percent of you got it right, and eighteen percent might have um, bamboozled yourselves into thinking it couldn't quite be that simple. Uh, Google it, research it, look it up on Goggle. <laughs> a lot of Google searches, Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah. So Googling is like a pretty good first step, right? Like, I'd probably be like, "All right, well, there's this thing called the Grand Arrangement, whatever that is." You know, or to right click and search DuckDuckGo for it, and all right. Maybe uh, maybe this thing here on Wikipedia, and we can read it and um, and see you know the consequences of it. And, and it looks like some of them they did not go directly to. You read all over all this kind of stuff, right? It's a good first step, you know. And for something like a, a quiz, you know, here, like if I was going to be writing my doctoral thesis on the expulsion of the Acadians, um, I would probably, you know, do more than Wikipedia on it, but, you know, for like a quiz on a critical thinking class test, like, that's probably fine. Now, this one is interesting, right? So the majority of you got it wrong. You had plenty of time to take this quiz, and yet the majority of students got this one wrong. How is it possible that they're both claims about history? How is it that the majority of people got this one wrong while the majority of this one got it right? What's the difference? What's what caused you 
let's engage in some meta metacognition here. What caused you to get one of them right and one of them wrong? What what was the trap you fell into? I got the second one wrong because I didn't look more into it. I just looked it up and looked at the first thing instead. I didn't do enough research on the Acadians. I did more research because you were not familiar with it, probably, right? Um, so by researching the amendment, trying to see if it was absolute, which it wasn't. So you got it right, it sounds like. Um, but like the 13th uh, Amendment states slavery is abolished, but not in certain cases. Yes. Uh, uh, you can be sentenced to slavery for committing a crime. True story. Um, so I just thought one amendment didn't end at all. Uh, it was a trick question, but I saw that all cases were not legal. Uh, well, the 13th Amendment did not completely stop slavery, right? So here's the thing, right? Like a lot of people are familiar with slavery in America, and we all we all believe that slavery is illegal in America. And if you look up the amendment that outlawed slavery, it's the 13th Amendment. However, the 13th Amendment does not actually outlaw slavery. It just limits it to punishment for a crime. Now, have people been punished um, with slavery? Uh, no, not really. But that exception has been used to um, authorize things like prison labor, right? Prisoners can be forced to labor on, on work gangs. If you've seen old uh, movies where people have like the ball and chain, um, like in, you know, these old, old timey movies where they have the striped suits and they have the, they're all chained together and they're like working on a, a railroad or a road, uh, things like that. Um, that was actually upheld in part because the 13th Amendment does allow slavery, forced labor in the case of um, criminal conviction. So, um, so, but yeah, the reason why you guys got this wrong is like what you said. Uh, it, it, when you just know something is true, like you, you will spend less time uh, examining it, right? Like I know that slavery is illegal, so I don't need to look it up. And then that's how you can get caught, right? Um, when I, I, I deliberately picked this topic because nobody's heard of it. Like, I mean, I vaguely heard of it. Um, I've been to New Orleans, you know, and I sort of heard something about it, but like, if you don't know anything about it, you, you kind of come at it with a fresh mind, you look it up. Whereas when you know something is true already, then you can see there's a pretty big swing, like a 37 point swing when you know something is true, but it's wrong. Okay. Um, if you're punishing something, then isn't that because it's illegal? Uh, no, they're use the American government uses slavery as a punishment. Uh, and so it is not illegal. Um, it's just like, you know, we don't, uh, like robbing, robbing somebody's illegal, you know? So, um, it's against the law. It's not, it's not against the law in America. You can, the government can enslave people. We just tend not to do it. And we tend to not think of it as slavery because it makes us very uncomfortable. <laughs> if it's prison, work, labor, forced labor, that's one thing. But man, slavery, you just can't call it that. So that's not cool. Yeah. Selective service is a form of slavery, right? Yeah, I mean, it's like, I mean, think about it. Like you have freedoms as an America, as an American, right? You have in, in America, you have freedoms, freedom of life, liberty, and property, right? Uh, pursuit of happiness. But the government could just be like, you're now a soldier, go to the front lines. And um, that seems like a awfully horrible violation of your right to life and liberty and pursuit of happiness, right? When they could just draft you and send you to go charge a machine gun nest, right? So um, the government would argue that you have voluntarily um, enrolled in the selective service do you guys know how you get enrolled in the draft? If you're a guy, at least. Have you guys ever heard of this thing called the FAFSA? Oh, maybe they change it. Neat. All right. Uh, until recently, male students were also required to register for the selective service. If you wanted to apply it. Yeah. So they're like, if you want to go to college and get financial aid, they tied that 
to you getting uh, signed up for the draft and possibly charging a, um, a machine gun nest, right? Uh, 2020, though. I did not know that. Good to know. See, looking up stuff, right? Uh, starting with the 2023-24 FAFSA, it is being removed. So when you apply later this year for the FAFSA, uh, you will not have to join the draft. And it looks like you're still required to register, but it's no longer a requirement to receive grants, loans, or other types of federal aid. Cool. Neat. That's something that bugged me. You know, it's like, why, you know, it's like basically saying like, yeah, if you want to go to college, you have to be willing to die for your country. And it's like, I would like to just, because like colleges, like even if, like forget about getting federal financial aid. Like if you want to get financial aid from your college, you have to sign up for the FAFSA. So even if you like want person A to give money to person B, like you ha like the government could be like, and now you're in Normandy, you know, charging the Nazis on the, the beach, you know. So. Okay. Um, is it true if you're the only son of your dad, you can't get drafted? I've never heard of that. So, and the DMV registered you. <laughs> is there class? You can't find a way to join. Uh, yes, there is class right now. Um Join in on the class chat uh, voice channel. Okay. Nothing is ever free. Yeah, but like, like I get it. Like, you know, the government can certainly tie its money to like, all right, you got to be willing, you know, you got to give us something back, right? Like, if we're going to give you this money, you got to give us your life, possibly. But like, having, limiting the college's ability to give you money, that that I have, that I have some issues with, you know what I mean? It's like a, a person should just be able to give money to another person without the government going like, and now you have to die. So, um, all right. Where was I? So do, 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 do study and die. Lol. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm not from the U S what is the draft? So the draft is something we don't really do anymore. Um, but basically, the government can say, uh, you're in the military now. Congratulations. Um, <laughs> uh, we haven't really drafted people since Vietnam. Um, the general consensus is that when you draft soldiers, they're not as good soldiers. We have an all-voluntary military now. Um, and so the, the question is sort of superfluous um, on, the, on the FAFSA anyway. But yeah, it basically means the government can be like, you're in the military. Have fun. Yeah. So, uh, it depends. Sounds like joining the military for men. It, it just, when you register with it, it just means they can draft you. So, so what we're going to do today is we're going to go through a number of claims and we're going to practice our skills on evaluating the claim to see if it's true or false. So you can ask me questions, any question you want to, you know, ask about it. I might know the answer. I might not. Uh, who said it? Is that person an expert? When did they say it? Is there a source? And then I'm going to ask you guys, true or false, you know, evaluate this claim. All right. So we're going to go through the process of critical thinking today. And then your quiz for today will be four, maybe five. I haven't quite decided yet. Um, more questions that you have to try to determine is the claim true or is the claim false and you're going to have to use all of your critical thinking skills to not get bamboozled 3.0 okay so here we go uh you're in the army now <laughs> uh what what is the meme uh you'll be a soldier right Uh, so for those of you that don't know, uh, the Polish army actually had a bear, uh, in it. Kojak, I think. No, that's not. Poland bear. What was his name? Wojcik. Yeah. So. There you go. It's true story. <laughs> maybe that, maybe that'll be in the, uh, one of the quiz questions. Okay. You can record this using AV1 now. That's cool. 
All right, so here we go. Aloe vera is effective at treating sunburn. What do you guys think? You need to evaluate, is this true? Is this false? You might ask clarifying questions like, what do you mean by effective? You know, like, you know, no, no don't just say true or false. Like that's, <laughs> everyone's like, true. No, no, <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> like, the point of this is we're going to go through the process of critical thinking, right? Everybody knows that it's true, but is it actually true? You know, there, that's, that's why so many students get these quiz questions wrong. Last year when I asked this, like most people got it wrong because um, they just know something to be true. You know, and that's uh, the opposite of what we want to be doing here. We want to evaluate if it's true. We want to go through the the critical thinking process to determine if it's true. And so what we have here is, of course, a picture of firemen on their way to a fire. They're, they've got all the aloe vera with them so they can put out the fires using aloe vera. Um, pros and cons of use. All it does is cool the burn. What do you mean by effective? Help heal or symptoms. Uh, it can be added to other problems and others. Okay, so who said this? Um, it's common knowledge, right? Everybody knows that aloe vera is effective at treating sunburn. Okay. And so where was it found? Who said this? Common. It's an urban legend, let's say. Or it might be true, but it's just common wisdom. Okay. Chris Vienna says, all it does is cool the burn. What do you mean by effective? Help heal or symptoms? So let's say that uh, it actually will um, re uh, reduce the uh, inflammation of the sunburn itself. Right? So you got the red, uh, the red skin. You put aloe vera on. It makes the sunburn, you know, go away or reduce the severity of the sunburn, something like that. Okay. So uh, aloe vera helps soothe burnt skin. I suppose it's true since aloe vera is usually used as a treatment for other things. This can help cool the skin. The back of the bottle said it. Well, yeah, backs of the bottle can say lots of things. It helped me in certain cases, but maybe it was all in my head. Uh, is there research to support the claim? Great question. So let's go through that. Um, let's see here. Is aloe vera effective at treating sunburn? Okay. And now when you get the results, uh, there, you should take a moment and look at the actual, um, websites that are, that are being returned here, right? So we've got eatingwell.com. Uh, we've got allolabs.com. Uh, so allolabs.com is probably a biased source, right? So uh, <laughs> uh, it cools the skin, it hydrates the skin, it helps heal the affected area. There you go. You guys have a the, the experts themselves who sell aloe vera. There you go. They tell you that it, sure enough, it, it works. These are three ways which aloe vera helps with sunburn. <laughs> All right. Um, there is a live stream, uh, Ryan. Okay. So how many people here think that allolabs.com is a trustworthy source for um, information on aloe vera? <laughs> uh, it sounds biased, yeah. The coconut oil is more effective. Uh, yeah, but our, our question isn't on, on coconut oil, right? Like it's, uh, they can lie to get more cells. Exactly. Um, so right. The Mayo Clinic is probably a good one. Healthline.com doesn't sound particularly trustworthy. Uh, NIH, uh, yeah, that sounds, uh, good. The NIH is the, uh, National Institutes of Health. And we actually have a scientific paper here. Cool. All right, let's look at this one. The efficacy of aloe vera cream in the prevention of burn and tan from ultraviolet was studied in 20 volunteers. Not a huge sample size. N equals 20 is not great, but we still have a actual scientific study versus the aloe vera people themselves telling you, yeah, you super should buy this. Right? Uh, erythema, I believe, is the scientific term for uh, sunburn, right? Uh, redness of skin caused by, yeah. So, uh, 
to do. They got 70% aloe vera cream, randomized, double blind, uh, before, after, before and after, and they're radiated with ultraviolet B. Uh, and then they graded the erythema and pigmentation. Aloe vera cream was continuing applied twice daily for the next three weeks. Uh, it showed that aloe vera has no sunburn or suntan protection and no efficacy in sunburn treatment when compared with placebo. So, there you go. Um, there's other articles here. Uh, uh, they commonly use aloe vera in soothing skincare products. Uh, we look at the anti-inflammatory potential of aloe vera gel. They're irritated with ultraviolet B. Uh, positive controls, very gel. Uh, reduced, okay, so this one says aloe vera gel significantly reduced UV induced sunburn after 48 hours, being superior to 1% hydrocortisone and placebo. In contrast, 1% hydrocortisone uh, was more efficient than aloe vera gel displayed some anti-inflammatory effects superior to those of 1% hydrocortisone and placebo gel. The aloe vera gel test here might be useful in topical treatment of, anti of inflammatory skin conditions such as sunburn. So we've got two opposing, <laughs> we've got two opposing uh, papers here. And so, um, <laughs> that study is written weirdly. It is, it is, yeah. WebMD is fairly good. Yeah, but again, it's sort of a summary of like things. So maybe, yeah, WebMD aloe vera. All right, supplement guide, here we go. People have used aloe vera for thousands of years for healing and supplement skin. Benefits, relieves heartburn, constipation, IBS. Uh, minor burns, anal fissures. Uh, psoriasis, aloe vera juice, aloe vera risks. I don't see anything on here for sunburn unless we're talking about like it may be okay <laughs> as a topical remedy for sunburn. Well, that's not a very convincing. Um, Claim there. So, uh, is that it for sunburn? Yeah, that on our summary here on WebMD, it may be okay for sunburn. Like, there you go. A very wishy washy statement. So convincing, right? Experiment was set up well, but the sample size isn't ideal to generalize the population. Um, yeah, that's. Should we continue evaluating sources? Yeah, like what you want to do is to find somebody doing what's called a meta study where they look at all the different studies on sunburn and they try to figure out based on the sample sizes and the rigor of the different studies. Like the, the first one we looked at was a double blind study, right? Uh, I don't know if the second one was. I think the second one was controlled. I don't know if it was double blind. I don't remember. And so, uh, so true or false, I don't know. <laughs> it's a tough one, right? Uh, th this isn't your quiz question. I'm not going to give you something like this on your quiz question. Like this one's actually tough, right? Like you've got competing scientific studies, you know, like you have fun, you know? <laughs> so, uh, it can help us first or second degree burns. Yeah. I've read the same thing. So, um, yeah, uh, but that's the process. Okay. And, and once you get two competing scientific studies, you go, Oh dear, you know, <laughs> and now, you know, like maybe, maybe we'll look up the, um, uh, the, yeah, that's the one. Okay. So in CCIH is the alt med, uh, um, branch of the national institutes of health. And so these guys are sort of the experts on alternative medicines, medicine in America. Um, historically, I don't care about historically. It's used topically. Oral use is promoted. I don't care about promoted. Um, I don't care what's grown. 
How much do we know? A number of studies have investigated it. Okay, great. Clinical research suggests that aloe vera, aloe vera based gel twice daily may improve acne. Cool, not what we care about though. It may speed burn healing. There's evidence it may reduce pain from burns. But we're talking about sunburn, not like an actual burn burn. Uh, IBS, don't care. Colitis, don't care. Diabetic full dustlers, don't care. So, um, yeah, I don't see anything on sunburn though. So, I don't see, like, burns, maybe, but also just says there is evidence. Like, um, <laughs> right, there's, uh, the, the wording on these sorts of things are actually quite uh, good RX, right? So uh, I don't know if good RX is a uh, trustworthy um, you know, website. But, uh, no clinical evidence that it provides help with sunburns. Okay. Uh, but again, what I'm seeing here is like, I don't see anything on the NCCIH website specifically on sunburns. It may reduce pain from burns. It may speed, but you see like may, there is evidence. Like they'll say things like, like they actually uh, will be very precise. There is some evidence. There is evidence. There's strong evidence. Um, there's not enough scientific evidence. You, you see how this works? You know, so when you look at these, uh, like when you actually go to a properly written website, they'll actually give you a confidence level and a claim. Okay. And it's generally well tolerated, right? Like they'll um, note it in association. Like all of these words are actually deliberately put in there. So I would say there's not good scientific evidence that it is effective at treating somewhere. But that's, that would be a tough one. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that to you guys. Some evidence is a pretty low bar, yeah. Uh, but is this true or false? I don't think there's enough evidence to support this claim. Okay. All right, here's the next claim. In order to create size and muscle growth, sometimes the body will hit a wall. The body is saying, look, I know all your tricks. I know you start with the bench press and you do chin-ups. I know exactly what you're going to do. And I prepared for it. So you have to go and use the shocking principle in which you change up your routine to surprise your muscles. Let's see if your pectoral muscle is used to that. So shocking. Who said this quote? A former governor of California. Governor Gray. No, Arnold. Yes. The Terminator. Yeah. So the uh, the former governor of California. It's a seven times Mr. Olympia winner. And uh, there's a video uh, here where he uh, he talks and about. What that basically means is that the body is saying, look, I know all your tricks. And he talks about the shocking principle. And so there's a number of memes, you know. You have to shock the muscles to grow. There's all sorts of um, amusing memes on the, the shocking principle. So, you don't know how to spell his last name? Yeah, you just type it into Word and then let it autocorrect for you. All right, so what do you think? This is bro science. Yeah. <laughs> right. So what do you think? Uh, is it true or false? This is a trust me, bro website. <laughs> we definitely need to look for scientific sources. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure there are scientific sources on the shocking principle. Let's, let's look. Shocking principle. Bodybuilding. So we have bodybuilding.com. Shocking principles on the forums. Let's go to the forums and... Uh, why do you want to shock your body? Shocking is just typical wider BS. If you aren't growing, it isn't because your body decided ho-hum. 
Well, there you go. Somebody on the forum said it's nonsense. 2005. There you go. Case closed. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if uh, these are any good. YouTube. Mm, uh, Muscleguide.com. Fatovsky. Edward Fatovsky. I don't know. I don't know. Muscles weren't designed to be bored. They hate monotony. There you go. <laughs> from the Terminator himself that's likely to be false it's called adaptation Arnold doesn't change for science science changes for Arnold <laughs> yeah, that's a good one um, I think it will make you stronger but not necessarily make your muscles bigger not enough evidence and research to support um, the technical term is muscle adaptation um Need more research? Okay, so here's the question. Is Arnold an expert on bodybuilding? Like, would you say that Arnold uh, is a qualified expert on bodybuilding? No. Yes. He is the evidence. Okay. Interesting, right? Like, he he won Miss Mr. Olympia seven times, right? Um, and so, clearly, he has to know at least something about it, right? Like, if, if somebody's going to tell you something about skiing and they've won the gold medal in the Olympics three times, right? Like, they, they clearly know something about skiing, you know? And so, you know, if the, if the gold medal Olympian tells you um, when you're skiing, you should always keep your shoulders pointed down the mountain. And then, uh, you know, one of your friends says, no, you should, you know, tilt your shoulders left and right as you're going down the mountain my natural inclination is to believe the Olympian because they have some sort of proof that they know what they're talking about. You guys know what I'm saying? So, um, a friend of the family uh, is a professor at USC, and he said that, like, you know, there's all these people that talk about ideas for losing weight, but if you want to know who to believe, look at the people who actually lose weight, you know? And, uh, and I, I think there's a certain pragmatic uh, sense to that, right? Like if you want to, uh, you know, become a bodybuilder, like following Arnold's advice is not the worst thing you can do because he's clear. He clearly has some proof that he knows what he's talking about, you know, assuming he's not lying to you, which it doesn't sound like it is here. Right. So uh, he didn't use enough steroids. You need more cycles until you become an expert. <laughs> the liver king. Um that doesn't mean he's not helped by a professional, time under tension, steroids, maybe that worked for him. Plus, he is the only example of this principle. I don't know. Like, he, I mean, he's worked with a lot of people, right? Like, a, a student in, in the previous class, if you scroll up in Discord, like, there's a photo of him, like, at Gold's Gym with Arnold, right? And uh, so, what we have here is what's called an expert testimony, right? You've got somebody who is an expert on the subject telling you, something is true. And you don't know, like, there's no, like, I, I don't see any scientific studies on the shocking principle, but you have an expert asserting that something is true. And so then you have to decide, well, you know, when you go to the gym, it's like you could do your regular routine or you could shock the muscles. It's, it's up to you. You got to do something, you know? And so it's like, do you believe Arnold or, or not? All right. Like you, at, at a certain point you have to, you know, when you go in and you're going to lift, it's like, do you take Arnold's advice or not? You know? So, um, um, and you can you can watch this video here. I'll I'll post it on YouTube or the YouTube video on Discord. But you know, you know, he basically comes in. And he says he's gonna mix up his routine and do twenty three fifteens on bench press and things like that. And I'm just like, damn, dude, <laughs> it's it's yeah. It's a lot of weight. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So I don't really have a good answer for you on this one either. Right. The, the like you saw how I try evaluating it. Like I'll try sci finding a scientific paper. Um, but at the end of the day, it's like when you go to the gym, you're going to do some sort of routine and you can either follow Arnold's advice or not. And you have to decide if you think he knows what he's talking about. So, 
uh, a lot of the stuff you said on Pumping Iron. Yeah, but that's that's uh, Pumping Iron was like the old nineteen seventy seven. Yeah, this this is from a few years ago. Okay, so here we have another claim. Mister Rogers was a sniper in Vietnam who wore sweaters all the time to cover up the tattoos that he got for his confirmed kills, and we've got some. Photographic evidence of Mr. Rogers flipping off the kids in his studio. So, uh, uh, it's from, um, no, he is, he's, he's not, this is not 1977. <laughs> this is, this is the governator right here, I think. Uh, yes, 20, 2015. So, how do we how do we evaluate this claim? Mr. Rogers. It, for those of you that don't know who Mr. Rogers is, he was a beloved childhood TV host who uh, always was wearing long sleeve sweaters on the show. So, first check if he was a Vietnam veteran. Okay. Rogers, Vietnam veteran. All that's interesting, specialops.org. That's Roger Stovak. Let's see, Mr. Rogers. Uh, uh, parade. None of these. Truth or fiction. Uh, Snopes. Uh, none of these are really believable. Um, Operation Military Kids, like that's just, I don't know, I'm not super happy with any of these. Maybe Parade.com. Uh, the urban legends that Fred Rogers was the Navy SEAL or Marine Sniper are urban legends. It's true that he died. He received the Presidential Medal, Medal of Freedom. Uh, so we've got a website here saying that it's a urban legend. Okay. Biography on Wikipedia, probably a. Probably a good place to start. Um, personal life, early life. Let's see. Pittsburgh, overweight, asthma. He had a ventriloquist dummy. Went to high school, president of student council, yearbook. Uh, okay, okay. He registered for the draft at age 20, where he is classified as available for military service. However, he changed to unqualified following a physical for the armed forces in 1950. Um, yeah, I don't think he went to, I don't think he went to the military. Okay. So any tattoos for the kills? Okay. So maybe, you know, he was just a independent contractor. There you go. No, no tattoos on his arms. Yep. So I think I think this one we could safely dismiss as urban legend. Um, so uh, yeah, search for his biography is a good idea. Would they let him in the military if he had asthma? Probably not. Um, he is a lie in internet. I don't know what that means, but uh, yeah, this is actually uh, actual footage from his show. He's doing like, where is Thumpkin? Where is Thumpkin? And so when he got to the middle finger, they screenshotted it. <laughs> he said he worked in the military, but it's a lie. Um, I don't think he ever was in the military. He was a, like a youth pastor or something like that. I don't know. Um, yeah, so this is definitely, this is an easy one. This is false. Okay. Uh, how about this one? Contrary to what previous studies found, playing Tetris has no effect on male testosterone levels. How would you evaluate how would you evaluate this claim? Google Scholar. Okay. That's a good one. How else? What's what's your approach? Because this is this sounds like a quote, right? In fact, it's got double quotes around it. It means this is taken from something, right? 
Hardvard studies. Search your studies on testosterone levels and Tetris. Check the claim. Yeah. If this is a quote, where did that quote come from? And the answer is it came from Nature Magazine. Now, um, is Nature Magazine a reputable source for science? Create your own case study. Yeah, it's, it's only a, a sample size of one, though. So, Is Nature a reputable source? Are you guys familiar with nature? Anytime you have a science journal, it's like one word. It's probably pretty reputable. So, uh, yeah, nature is probably the most prestigious science journal out there. Um, kind of like the New England Journal of Medicine. You know, the, there are these like top tier publications. It's extremely hard to get published in nature. Um, and they do a pretty damn good job with their peer review. So just based on the fact that it was published in nature, I would be inclined to believe this, right? Um, just purely on the name recognition. Now, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily true, but I would have a pretty strong inclination to believe it because it is coming from a reputable source, right? Like, all, like because it was published in Nature doesn't mean that it's true, but um, there's only a limited amount of time, you know, in the world, and so. You could do that thing like we do with aloe vera, where you're digging into all the sources and doing all the research yourself. And sometimes you do need to do that. But, you know, sometimes you just be like, well, you know, it was in a nature journal. Good enough for me. Right. So um, study size of 140. Um, you could look at the previous studies that were linked to it from that uh, article. And what's interesting is that this is another case where you have scientific studies contradicting each other, right? But, um, you know, the Nature Mag one showed there is no effect on male testosterone levels from playing Tetris. Okay, claim number four. Success in life is half based on chance and half based on skill. Do what you can to control chance and build your skill. If you get addicted to playing Tetris, maybe when it starts affecting your life like sleep. Yeah, again, it's not like... Um, a lot of students just use like their prior existing beliefs to determine if a claim is true or not. And that's, you, you don't want to do that for critical thinking, right? Like you don't want to use the fact, you know, that slavery is outlawed in America, you know, to answer a question, you need to, you need to look the stuff up. Right. Uh, probably, <laughs> probably. How do you, how do you evaluate this? What, what's, what are your steps? Depends. But no, like, how do, how do you evaluate this claim? All right. What's, what's the approach? That's, that's our, that's our topic for today, right? Is like, how do you, how, you know, you're going to be presented four questions, maybe five questions on the quiz for today. Like, how do you, how do you determine if it's true or false? What's your method? Right. Who spoke the words? Machiavelli. So Nikolai Machiavelli, who's most famous for saying it is better to be feared than to be loved, um, but has kind of a bad rap as the result of that. We say Machiavellian is somebody who's sinister and manipulative and working politically behind the scenes. But um, there's a lot more to Machiavelli than that one quote in The Prince, and there's a lot more to Machiavelli than just The Prince. So um, life sometimes is things that can't be controlled. Yeah. And so, so his thing is like, you do what you can to control chance, right? Like if you're going to be driving on the freeway, you know, chance would be something like your tire blowing out. But if you can sort of prepare for that to a certain extent, right? Like you can, you know, take driver's ed classes and uh, play Mario Kart or something, you know? Um, you know, you can get, can't, getting cancer is um, chance, but at the same time, if you eat healthy and you sleep a lot, and things like that, then it lowers your chances of getting cancer. So you do what you can. Like uh, Machiavelli's thing here is like, you know, nothing, like if a meteor is going to fall out of the sky and kill you, there's nothing you can really do about it, right? It's random. Like sometimes you just die. But do what you can to control chance. And then on the areas where it's all skill-based, try and develop your skill. So that said, I don't think this is something that's really true or false. Um, half and half. It's not like a scientific study. This is life advice. 
you know, and life advice is not something that is true or false. You know, it's a, it's a imperative. You should, you should do something is not something that is either true or false. So, uh, are you all still connected? I am. You're still here. Okay. Success is a combination of luck and skill. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. You know, uh, if you're only like, it's kind of one of those things like people that are successful tend to, you know, accredit their hard work to their success. And it's true. Like in general, if you don't work hard, if you don't put in the effort, if you don't um, develop yourself, you're not going to be successful promptly. Like it's very unlikely for, you know, you to win the lottery or something. And that's not even really being successful, you know, whatever that means. Um, it, it does take a hell of a lot of hard work and determination and things like that to become successful. So people tend to accredit to themselves. They don't like, you know, being told, well, you know, it's because you're born in America and not, you know, some other country. Um, but, you know, it is sort of a combination of like, you have to have, you know, a certain amount of things go right. You know, you didn't, you didn't get childhood cancer and die. You know, like, it is kind of a combination of the two things, but uh, this is still advice. It's not really something that could be true or false. Okay. Uh, tap the name Kearney. Uh, you can make stuff happen in your own life. You can, you know, and, and, and that's the flip side of it is that some people think that life is just all random and there's nothing they can do and they're helpless. And that's a really poisonous attitude to have towards life. Like, you know, I, you know, I can't control when I'm going to die, you know, I'll just, things just happen to me, you know, and they, they sort of remove all of their own agency from their life. And then they go through life being very sad and miserable and don't understand why that is, you know, so If you drive off the road, that's your own fault, not luck. Yeah, it, I mean, it is like, I, I actually, I actually think this is a nice way of thinking about it. It's like, yeah, some parts of life are random and parts of life are under your control and do what you can to control chance, you know, to a certain extent and build your skill, get good at driving. If you're going to drive, make sure you're competent at driving, you know, don't, you know, just pass the drive DMV and, you know, <laughs> okay. Um, you're standing and somebody hits you, you can't control that. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, a meteor could hit you. A plane could fall out of the sky and there's nothing you can do about that. But at the same time, you don't need to worry about that because it's not really something you can you can mitigate. Okay, so if you jump off a building, you're increasing your opportunity for a minute of death, yeah. Okay, so mosquitoes don't like Skrillex. How do you evaluate this? We got one minute left. So search up Skrillex effects on mosquitoes, all right? Here you go. The electronic song, Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites, Reduce Host Attack and Mating Success in Egypti Mosquitoes. And so it's by people in Malaysia, Japan, Indonesia, and Thailand. And they do a study where they have mosquitoes, they play Skrillex or not. And when Skrillex is playing, uh, female mosquitoes, which are the ones that bite and draw blood, are less likely to attack. Okay. And copulate. When they're exposed to music, they copulate far less often than their counterparts, when there, there is no music. So, <laughs> uh, there you go. So, <laughs> uh, but is this true? Like, it, you know, um, does, does that paper justify this claim here? I was going to say, I play Skrillex really loud in front of the mosquitoes to get the react. Yeah. And they did. And, but it's only one song, right? And it's only Skrillex, right? And so I think in order to justify this claim, you would need to do a little bit more work, right? You'd have to try playing Aphex Twin versus Skrillex. Uh, you'd have to try different Skrillex songs to see if it's in particular Skrillex they hate, or if it's just like any noise, right? Cause like maybe any noise at all, like maybe you, you shake some castanets or something, you know, and, and they, bugger off, you know, um, our birds real. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I, I think we need more research on this one and then, uh, we'll end. Oh, we're already out of time, but like, um, this, this approach, almost all dollar bills have cocaine on them. Like this approach, like how, you know, like type it into Google, look at the sources, see if you can find good studies, 
pull the data, look at the authors, see if they have bias. That methodology, that training that you do in critical thinking, a lot of you are just like guessing, like, yes, I think that's true. And, and that's wrong. <laughs> like, <clears throat> I mean, may, maybe, maybe it is true, in fact. Maybe you're going to be right about it. But that approach of just being like, yeah, that sounds true to me. That's not the critical thinking way. The critical thinking way is when presented with a claim, almost all dollar bills have cocaine on them that you are like, I don't know if that's true or not. Let's look it up. And you go and you find a study where, you know, the National Institutes of Health or somebody re reputable has done a study and tested a number of dollar bills and said 70% of them have cocaine on them or something like that. Okay. So uh, that that's what I'm trying to get through to you. And so for your quiz for today, again, you're going to need to evaluate claims, look up data, not just like guess, not just use your own personal, you know, pre-existing knowledge, but actually like dig into it and find out if the claims are true or false. Okay. So I'll see you guys on Friday. There's a lot of dirty money everywhere. Yeah. Like quite literally dirty money. <laughs> uh, yeah. A lot of bacteria on, uh, on cash money. And on that happy note, I'll see you guys on Friday. Peace.